Hey everyone, uh, this is the first video in my new series where I'm going to do some development for uh, one to two weeks and post a video about it. And in each of those videos, I'm going to talk about what I've built, why I decided to build it, uh, how I built it, as well as uh, some other things I learned along the way. I'm planning to do it for at least five videos, including this one, uh, but we'll see how many I'll be able to do after that. Uh, for this week, I made a Q&A website for coders, which you can find at csqa.io. And I wanted to make this website because I know that there are a lot of beginners and intermediate learners uh, here watching this channel. And I wanted to create a place where you guys can hopefully ask each other uh, any coding related questions. So let me quickly go through the tech stack I used for this. Uh, I used Python and Django for backend, Postgres for database, Heroku for deployment, and Bootstrap for styling. And that's it. Uh, I was originally planning to put something like React or Vue.js on top of it, but I decided against it, at least for, uh, for this version. And I'm going to explain the reasoning behind that later. Anyway, let me show you what the current website uh, looks like right now. Uh, as you can see, it has pretty simple styling, and it has most things that you would expect from a Q&A website, like a list of questions right here. Uh, these are real questions from you know, some of you guys and the ability to uh, log in and answer uh, questions if you want. I think one interesting thing here is what it will look like uh, without Bootstrap. And without Bootstrap, it will look like this. So as you can see, uh, you know, there's much less styling and it's harder to see and use. So Bootstrap definitely makes it uh, much easier to you know, put all the styling in place so it's easier to use. So as I mentioned earlier, I was originally going to use a JavaScript uh, framework, either React or Vue.js. But then I was thinking about how my last uh, project went. Basically for that one, you know, I was using Django and React, and I did a bunch of development for a few months. But after that, I sort of realized, you know, maybe it's not something people wanted in the first place. So that's why I stopped working on the project. Uh, I wanted to try a different approach this time, uh, where I will launch this product as fast as possible and get feedback from people you know, as soon as possible. And that's why I decided to only use uh, Django and no JavaScript framework this time so I can build it faster. And I think uh, this approach you know, worked well this time. So for example, uh, when I launched this website, I didn't have any uh, pagination functionality. You know, I was showing all the questions at once, but then when I started getting uh, more and more questions, it became really messy, so I decided to, you know, build that in. And then the same thing with uh, these upvoting and downvoting uh, functions, you know, for the question, for each question. I didn't have it before, but when I started getting sort of uh, lower quality questions, I thought, okay, you know, I need that uh, functionality now, so I know which questions are not that good. And if you look through this website, you probably see that there are a lot of missing functionalities, for example, notifications. Um, but I feel like with this approach, you know, everything I've built is something that's, that was necessary for uh, users. Uh, so I feel like with this approach, you know, there's uh, less risk of uh, building something people don't really want. Uh, you can you know, respond to what people need more. Okay, so I feel like this video is uh, getting to a good length already, but since this is mostly a Python-based channel, uh, let me show you a few Python things that I reviewed uh, through this project. The first thing is called uh, fstring, which is available since uh, Python 3.6. To explain that, I'm going to use my source code of this project, which is available on GitHub. If you go to the views.py file within the questions folder, you should be able to see this function at vote view. I'm going to show the same function on Visual Studio Code here. Now this function vote view uh, is a function for handling the user's request uh, for upvoting or downvoting a question. And it's given the user's request from the browser as well as the question ID. And in this function, in some cases, uh, we want to redirect the user's browser uh, directly back to the question page without doing anything else. So that's uh, this line right here, for example. And here, we want to produce a string that's going to represent uh, the given question's URL. Uh, that should look like slash question slash uh, ID, whatever that ID is. And f string right here achieves that uh, by using this little f expression right here. 
and uh, these curly brackets and you know the given variable id right here and id is an integer here okay the next step i wanted to share is actually in the same function and that is to keep your function as flat as possible uh, especially when you have a lot of uh, if statements and if conditions so to explain what i mean i need to explain a little bit more about this function uh, this void view uh, function, like I said earlier, takes the browser's request as well as the question ID. And if the current user is not authenticated, then we're going to redirect that user to the account signup page. And uh, if the current user's ID is the same as the question's poster's uh, user ID, we don't want uh, a user to vote on their own question. So we're going to redirect that user to the question page without doing anything else. And if the requests uh, method is not post, because we are expecting a post request, uh, if that's not the case, we're going to uh, redirect that user to the question page without doing anything else too. And if all of these conditions are not true, then we're going to uh, update uh, the vote with the update vote function. So that's how I wrote this function, but someone else might write it in a slightly different way. Uh, for example, kind of like this. So let me explain this function here. Here I wrote, if the current user is authenticated, that's good. Then let's check uh, if the current user's ID is the same as the question's poster's user ID. And if that's not the case, then that's good. Uh, let's make sure the request method is post. And if all of these are true, then update the votes. And then uh, for all the other cases, we're going to deal with them with the uh, else clauses right here. So the logic of this function is the same as before, assuming that I didn't make any mistake. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot more uh, nested if clauses here. And it's much harder to read, I think, and much easier to make a mistake if you write it like that. So ideally, when you write uh, whatever function you want to write, it's better to write it uh, more flat, uh, kind of like this, and then try to return as soon as possible so that you don't have to you know, write extra uh, else classes here. OK, uh, enough for Python lessons, but there is uh, one last tip I wanted to share about Django. Uh, so when you create a new Django project, make sure to start your own custom user model, uh, which would look like this from the very beginning. Because if you don't, and if you use Django's uh, built-in user model, it's going to be very uh, painful to fix it. And that's a mistake I made this time. Uh, it's possible to fix it, but it's super painful involving uh, running some SQL queries. So I would you know, avoid that mistake. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, this is sort of a new format, so let me know what you, th uh, what you thought of it in the comment section below. And uh, thank you as always for watching my videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.